Hey everybody, welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by Jericho Graphics and Web Design. Um, this tutorial video, I'm just going to show you how to make a gloss button using Corel X4. And when I say gloss button, uh, they're like play buttons you'll see on like Windows Media. Um, a lot of websites now use little, these circular glossy play buttons for their video content. Um, the NHL is using them on pretty much all their NHL team websites. Uh, let's see, I think I have one open here. So here's the Canucks website. There you go, right there. You can see this little little play button right there. So they're really, really popular, and they come in all shapes and sizes. So uh, I'm just going to quickly bang one out for you guys, and you can kind of customize it yourself. I'm going to use uh, CorelDRAW X4. I might redo this video uh, using uh, a tutorial for Illustrator, but uh, I'll just use Corel right now. So I'm going to grab my ellipse tool here, which is like your circle tool. Draw a circle holding shift and control to keep it perfectly symmetrical instead of you know something like this that kinda goes all over the place shift control I'm gonna let's make this thing uh, red so I click red uh, my left color palette here is RGB my right color palette CMYK I right click on my X to get rid of that border and I'm gonna take this I'm gonna hit control C and can and it, which it means co to copy it and then control V to paste it so now I've got one on top of each other I'm going to make the top one black and then I'm going to grab my transparency tool and with my transparency tool I'm going to make this black one a radial transparency like that bang so now we've got this nice kind of fade into it, like a bright red fades out to kind of a black then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and uh, I'm going to hold the, this is the top black one which now has a transparency I'm going to take this scale it in a bit holding shift instead of you know, I'm holding shift that way it scales properly. Holding shift, I'm going to right click to duplicate. Now I've got another one in there. I'm going to click on this guy. I'm going to go to my transparency tool and I'm just going to get rid of that transparency because I don't need that on this on this, this one here yet. So now I got this black one inside. I'm going to click on it, drag it down holding control. I'm going to right click to duplicate. When you right click in Corel you see a little plus. It's kind of hard to see on this one, but there's a little plus lower to the, the pointer that indicates that you're duplicating what you have selected. So let go. Now I've got this black one. Well, and this other black one. I'll just make it red so you can see it. And I'm going to hold that, hold shift, click on the top black one, and hit trim, which punches basically like a cookie cutter. It takes the red one and cookie cuts it right through the black one. So I get rid of that, and there we go. So now I'm going to make that guy white. And I'm just going to double click on it, bring up my nodes, and take this node here in the middle and just drag it down a bit, just because I know that I that that shape isn't exactly how I wanted the highlight part. So this is basically the highlight part of the gloss bubble. So now I'm going to take that, I'm going to grab my transparency tool again, and I'm just going to click somewhere in the tr in the image and start dragging down. I'm going to hold Control so it stays straight, and let go about there. Move, and then you can just set this up how you want it. You can play with the transparency, how much you want it to look, how much you want the white. I might bring it down right so the top's a little bit white. It's a little too strong. Somewhere in that looks good. Okay, so there you go. Uh, I'll play with it a little bit more. Here we go. Uh, yeah, there you go. Eh, it's not the nicest, but there you go. You get the idea. You got this nice little glossy button. Looks pretty shiny and cool. Um, actually, since we had it open. Let's try and well, well we're not going to duplicate this exactly because the way I've set it up is a little bit different. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit print screen, which copies like, everything that's on my screen. Go back to Corel. I'm going to hit I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to hit Control V to paste the screen. And now I'm going to zoom in. I got dual monitors. That's why that other side's over there. I'm going to zoom in, and I'm just going to grab a little square. I'm going to mouse over that button. Holding shift, I have the square selected. I'm going to hold shift and click on the MIG screen. I'm going to hit the intersect button, which just basically takes the chunk that that squares around and copies that. So intersect, and I'm going to delete the big image, get rid of that square that I used. And there's my button. Let's zoom out. Go back down here. Put it beside it. Okay, so they got like an extra little outline around it. So I'm just going to duplicate that black circle that has the radial transparency move that to the back I'm going to remove the transparency let's just make it gray now what I'm going to do is I want to add you can kind of see on the Canucks one that they have like a little shadow going around the uh, 
the original button. So we want that. So what we're going to do, how to do that, is I'm going to select one of the smaller circles, like this black one here, for example. We'll use him, and I'm going to click on, on my drop shadow effect. My preset I'm going to use is small glow. I'm going to first select my color. I want that black. I'm going to make it. Uh, this is basically the strength of how transparent you want that highlight that, or that drop shadow. So I'm going to make it 100%. I want it to be strong. And then I'm going to bring it down to like, say, I don't know, like a 8, 8, 9. Nine's good. There you go. So a 9. And now what you see is you got this big black kind of a mess. The red's gone and uh, it doesn't look good. So I'm going to break this apart. And basically what happened was is the the black circle was on top of the red one and I did a drop shadow on the black one so the drop shadow also appears over top of the red one so I'm going to take the gray circle and my drop shadow right there gray circle and my drop shadow I'm going to go to arrange order and send both of those to the back of the page so which brings back the red one so now I've got the red one back and uh, now all I want to do is basically just add that play button I'm going to use the square tool I'm going to hold uh, shift so it's a perfect our control sorry so it's a perfect square let go and I'm gonna just click once on it and I'm gonna use my rotators to rotate it holding control so it does it proportionately or properly and now I've got a diamond shape I'm gonna click right on it and I'm gonna hit convert to curves then I'm gonna double click on it and it brings up my nodes I'm gonna delete the left node there we go and I'm just going to shrink it down so it looks more like a well-scaled play button. There we go. Now I'm going to hit P, which is the center, to center it. But my other circle is not centered. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit, I'm going to take my play, little play icon. I'm going to hold shift, select my circle, and then hit C for center. And E then just to bring it up. Now I'm just going to make this guy a bit bigger. I'm going to move them a little bit to the right because it's not quite centered. And then I'm going to make give it a white fill. I'm going to delete or I'm going to hit down the X to get rid of the outline. And yeah, that's that's pretty much that's pretty much the idea. You can play with colors, scale things differently, make that bigger. You know, you can get rid of this part. You know, there's this kind of more just like a solid color that kind of thing. I mean if I really wanted to get exact, it looks like they've got like a little uh, a little highlight right there, that little little moon guy. So I mean I could do that. What I would do is I just come back here, take my highlight, make my highlight a little bit bigger because there's kind of almost goes to the edge. And then I'd take my green circle, I'd hold shift, bring him in, click right to duplicate, and then I'd click right or what I do is I do what I did with the last one. I just drag him down a bit and then right click to duplicate that so I've got these two this guy and then this other green guy here I just made blue click on the red then hold shift click on the blue hit trim there you go and then you hit your color which is green that's the idea here I'll put it right beside it colors are a bit off and if you want to make the colors exact exact you can try grab your eyedropper tool click on the on a JPEG or whatever image you've got in there and you can see down here on the bottom it gives you the exact RGB color code of the the, the pixel you s selected with your uh, with the tool then after you got your eyedropper tool you click over the eyedropper tool you grab your paint bucket tool go over the vector piece that you want to so change the color to and you just click on it boom there you go and then on this guy there bang there you go so roundabout way that's how you make a button like that. So thanks for watching the video. Uh, hopefully I'll be loading up a bunch more of these videos on uh, my uh, YouTube channel there uh, if I can get some time. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you got any questions or comments, uh, visit the website at jerahco.com and just hit up the contact page. So uh, thanks for watching, guys, and hope you had uh, hope you learned something. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.